Yeah, it's gonna be such a pain because everything has to touch perfectly. I mean, this is so much more difficult than just doing a, you know, like a normal, a normal wall. But I don't have a choice, do I? Because this keeps moving when I'm trying to make sure everything fits, I'm just gonna go ahead and add this little piece of a two by six. That's not bad. I'm still following my cutting plan. I mean, it looks like it's gonna be okay. Okay, I need uh, four of these, two on each side. So I'm gonna work now on finishing up my uh, window opening. Um, so you'll see here, I just cut, you can see it right here, um, a flat two by six, which will go directly below the header and uh, above the jack stud. And then I'm gonna finish up the bottom. So I've cut all my uh, additional window pieces. Again, I'm just kind of dry fitting everything at this point. And then there'll be one in the middle as usual. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So see, that's my three by three window opening that is done. I mean, obviously you've seen, I haven't fastened anything at this point. I'm gonna finish cutting everything and then I'll come back and fasten everything. Uh, but yeah, it looks good. So half of the wall now is pretty much done. And so now I just have to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So there you have it. It's pretty much done. Um, you can see I'm still missing uh, the post that's gonna go directly under the ridge. Um, all, all a few little things that's gonna go over the, the windows, but that's really just details. Um, at this point, all the main cutting has been done. So I did tell you there was a better way to prevent the wall from sliding. And so this time that I have the time and that I got the chance to think about it, um, that's the method I'm gonna follow. So again, I'm just using straps. I'm gonna bend them and I'm gonna attach them to the bottom plate at four location because the bottom plate is uh, in two pieces. And yeah, that's what we'll do. I think here at the end, I'm gonna put one right here in between the studs. So let's just arbitrarily pick nine inches is where I put one. Uh, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Nine inches. So this is gonna sit, uh, let's see, yeah, it's gonna sit this way. So I'm just using a, a DeWalt router with like a little cutting beat to get this done. All right, let's give it a shot. Uh, I haven't used this thing many times, so. Yeah, perfect. Just have to kind of decide where we'll be bending it. Uh, okay, and so that, and so I also wanted to do the edge as well. We'll just have it like this. The next step is going to be to attach those where they should be, uh, where we just did those grooves. I'm gonna be using some uh, roof nails because they have a really flat head, so nothing will be sticking out. Man. See, nice and flat. Probably gonna cut those so that I don't sell. Let's try and see if we can make this a little less dangerous. Perfect, at least I won't be poking myself. So just like I did previously, we're gonna slope it by a quarter of an inch. So 
it's never a bad idea to kind of secure everything so that you don't have to worry about it moving. Do a, a fit. So you can see here, I actually marked the line for the 36 inches, which is my rough opening, because we have to make sure we absolutely respect that. Okay, that's the moment of truth. That looks good. So here's how you know if you've done it right. If uh, my studs were straight like they used to be, this was sitting flat right on my line for the rough opening. And now with my slope, I have my quarter of an inch slope here. So everything, uh, everything looks great. So I'm gonna start by nailing the jack stud together. Yeah. So right now I'm shooting uh, two and a half inch nails. Same thing on the other side. And now I can place that one under. I'm just gonna start attaching it to the bottom plate. So as usual, just uh, shooting three nails. So sometimes you'll have to raise them a little bit so that they are flush. So to attach my king stud to my headers, so all I'm gonna do is use some like pretty, well, I thought that was gonna be, wait, yeah, they're not that long. I'm going to use your case. If you're building somewhere else in the US where you don't have typical issues with wind, you will probably have only one king and one jack, me me making this much easier to frame than what I'm going through. So, I've been playing for a little bit too long, trying to figure out what was wrong. So, that's the limitation of doing everything based on my drawings, is that my drawings are assuming that each stud is one and a half inch, so three inch per stud, and that's what I based my, that's how I decided what size my header was gonna be. But if you actually measure, this is more like three and one eighth. So times two on each side, you end up with an extra quarter of an inch. So my header ends up being shot by a quarter of an inch. Um, yeah, which is kind of disappointing, but I mean, it is what it is. It might be the same thing at all the other ones. So I think I'm just gonna put some, uh, I've just cut a piece of a, uh, a quarter of an inch piece. And so I think I'm just gonna shim it like that. And now everything should fit better. So the most important thing is always to check that my rough opening is respected. Okay. Those ones should be pretty easy. All right, good enough. Okay, the last step is to place that bottom seal So we've finished this area and the window. Now it's exactly the same thing for the door and the other window. So So we've got pretty bad weather yesterday. It was actually a pretty decent storm. There's actually a little bit of snow on the ground and we had very, very high winds. And <laughs> as you can see, uh, the top completely got ripped off. So thankfully I did not lose the top. It's still here. Oh yeah, it got completely ripped off, like all the, the edges. I mean, the winds were pretty fast, so I'm not shocked. Today's goal is to kind of like 
finish up a few things. So this is almost, yeah, this is 59 inches and uh, 7 eighths. Just here, they will transfer the load from the ridge beam all the way to my header, you know, because this is like too long. So I think yeah, I, have a, I have one here at 16. For those, I don't have any of the measurements. So let's say that you want to know exactly the length of, uh, you know, this stud I'm going to put right here. It's fairly easy, especially when you have one of reference, because, uh, you know, if I measure this one from the top of the header all the way to the top part here, and I know that the next one is going to be, I don't know, let's say like 16 inches over, then you just have to know uh, 16 inches, how much does that go up by? And it's fairly easy because we know that the slope is 612 meaning that it goes up by six inches every 12 inches so it's mass pretty easy i mean if you go if you go up six inches every 12 inches how many inches do you go up for every 16 inches and so that is just 16 times 6 divided by 12 so that's eight inches. So that's what I need to go up by for every 16 inches. We do measure from the top of the header to the peak here. That is 49 and 516. So 49, 516. And then I just have to add eight inches to that. And this is 57 and 516. And work that right, the angle you need. If I can unlock this thing. Oh, come on. Oh, and that's it. 20, 26 and a half. Yeah, that's good. Good fit. So I just did the cut here. It's very simple. Follow the same logic. So now we just have to mark up pretty much where those studs are going to go. So this one is going to go 16 inches. And then this one here, 32. So now that I've done my marks here, I can also make secondary marks here, which will help in keeping them straight. So obviously this is in the way. Actually, I'm, I just need to cut this off and I can still fit it in. But this one's going here. Use this one instead. Okay. And then this guy is going here. Et voila. Same thing on the other window. So now is the moment we've all been waiting for. About to kind of dry fit everything in. Yeah, it's kind of worrisome. Uh, yeah, this is not... <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's not great. It is not great at all. Oh, man. <sighs> gable and wall, gable and wall. We thought this would be a good idea. So this one here, some 16. I don't get it. I don't know, I have some random ones that are a little longer. Like for example, this king stud here is really... But again, sometimes it's just like there's a bow in it and if you literally move it by half an inch, then it's good. Like if you kind of... I think that's what I have to do is kind of force it in. But see, like this one is really bad. Why? Why do I have such a gap here? I knew this would be a painful step. So everything is kind of moving all over the place. So just like I did for my bottom plate, I'm gonna add blocks here to make sure that this doesn't move. So this end is kind of like set in stone. What I'm trying to do before I go nuts with the nail gun is I'm using some screws to kind of like attach the plate to uh, the studs and kind of see how it looks. And so that if it doesn't look good, I can always easily remove it. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know you can build a gable in wall. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's anyone, any, if there's any carpenter watching this, if they have any tips to get this done in a much easier fashion, please let me know. This is insane. Like and that we're still on my line. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad so far. So 
I don't want to get too excited. Well, it's getting better. This is almost on the mark, so. And I know no framer would ever use screws for this, but they would see it as a big waste, but I don't know any better. And I'm trying to make my life easier, so I don't care. Well, check this out. I mean, this is actually pretty good. Uh, I was really worried for a minute, and then it turned out that it kind of worked out. Boom. Yeah, three per studs. Half of the wall is officially done. Everything is now top to bottom. So now I just have to do the same thing over there. <sighs> so this is it. All right, I'll see you in the next one for more cabin building. <laughs>